Hello, everyone. D. Alfred Ostrowski here, and in this recording, I'm going to be addressing Pushdown Automaton as the fifth lecture in Theory of Computation. So here we're expanding our repertoire, and it is important to note that the Pushdown Automaton is an automaton, right? It is an automaton, quite simply, that operates with an external data structure, which makes it completely unique from the category of that we're uh, already very familiar with is of regular languages, right? Which is our very uh, smallest category when we look among the Chomsky hierarchy, right? So this is designated as what we determine as non-regular, which actually goes well beyond this category, but that's the next step up of which we call as a context, context free uh, languages. And it's represented by uh, uh, context-free grammar, and as well as uh, pushdown automaton, just in the same way that regular expressions are functionally equivalent to DFA and NFA uh, representations, right? And DFA and NFA exist in the same language. We went through that already. Uh, a couple extra designations as we, you know, further put these terms into context. What does it mean? to be context free, okay. Or specifically, and instead of having some self-defining terms that you typically see in most textbooks, how does this compare, okay, to something that is context free, okay. Uh, well, the next step up in complexity might be, would be considered context sensitive. Our classical examples of that could include capitalization of a, first word, the first letter of a first word in a sentence, the cat ran to the hill. So I have the represented twice. And setting up the rule for capitalization, what's the difference between each of the words where, well, in this case, it is the, I have to take, I have to be sensitive to the context of which I've been using it. If it's the first letter in the word, I'm going to capitalize it. If it's not, then I'm not going to capitalize it, right? Similar nature, let's say uh, I before E, except after C, right? Rule in English spelling. Let's say I say uh, receive, and it would be E-I as opposed to I-E, okay? What's the difference? Well, it's whatever following uh, the letter C. So we see a couple of things dynamics here or similarities between regular and non-regular is the fact that I have to remember something. I have to use extra memory. In this case, I have to use extra rules and perhaps even more memory, okay, than what I would use to define context-free. So another layman's term of context-free uh, grammars would be general grammars, okay? Very, very, our most basic grammars which are defined by a non-terminal on the left-hand side of the assignment and terminals or non combination of terminals on the right, okay? And we increase in both complexity and the amount of memory that's being leveraged as we expand our categories to uh, even to the level of uh, recursively enumerative that would require a Turing machine, which is yet another uh, more expansive uh, operation and can it be expressed in terms of states just like with DFA, NFA, push down automaton, except in this case, you have a complete, fully operational link list, if you will. Okay. Or uh, tape where I can move forward and backward and use multiple dimensions as well. So um, so that's the direction we're going to that puts everything in context of where we stand and sets us up for a little more uh, well-informed uh, definition of what we're referring to when we describe push down automatons, right? So, uh, so let's look at one of our classic problems for context-free grammar and in this case, instead of using a grammar to solve it, I'm going to use a push down automaton, right? And here again, our regular language was A-N-B-M, 
over the language of all A's and uh, B's. Uh, but A N B N is non-regular and requires a grammar to solve as opposed to a regular expression or FA DFA. And I can use a PDA pushdown automaton uh, to solve this. Why? Because it allows me the same transitions for the exception that it provides the means of operating to a stack. Okay, so if I look at and I try to think about what's this the the simplest structure that I might need to solve this problem programmatically if I'm looking at a language of all A's followed by equal number of B's. Say A B, A A B B, A A A, B, 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 so on and so forth, progressing on. I need to count uh, the number or I can push and pop from a stack. So I can think about this in terms of an automaton. Uh, for the exception, I have to put in an uh, extra operation, and that is operating to our external data structure. So I can look at this as this problem as a, a, a starting structure where I'm going to uh, continue the loop. And from an English language, I can say uh, I would be pushing to the stack that this isn't the case of all the A's. And then I'm going to make a transition to where I'm going to be popping from the stack, okay? Uh, and I don't have to transition on lambda, I transition on the first B in this case. If I was just examining a count, then I would need a lambda transition, um, but I'd be popping from the stack. And what's going to put me in a final state is my empty stack, okay? So that's from a language English language-based description how I would exactly solve this problem, right? So let me write down the solution. We'll work through it and clean it up a little bit, okay? And give you complete uh, explanation. So the alphabet, the final states, the initial states, our formalized definition is all the same. Let's just look at the basic mechanics and have the general understanding that here, what I'm looking at, the context-free grammar, it's all about the support of that transition and the operations on the uh, pushing to the stack, right? So, great. So let's look at the transitions and I can look from my starting state here. I have a state of zero and I can go to a state of one. And again, that is my, I'm going to push and the state two is so I'm going to pop. And then hopefully if I have an empty uh, stack, I'm going to transition to final state. If I don't, then I'm going to end up uh, remaining in the state two in most cases, right? So that's how it's gonna look from an FA uh, type perspective. Uh, or automaton perspective, I wouldn't say finite automaton because it isn't finite, right? It is a little more powerful than that, right? So here, I'm just gonna outline my transitions and I'm going to write the state here. And sometimes use an alphabet to work with the stack to differentiate between the input alphabet and the alphabet that I'm operating in the stack here, I could just push and pop A's, okay? I don't have to uh, uh, worry about that too much, right? I, as long as I keep them uh, straight. So in this case, I can, uh, I can say um, A as input and I can use a Z can be my the equivalence of an empty stack, right? So I can put Z down here just to remind myself, right, if I will. And in this case, I can uh, make the initial transition to uh, state one. And in this case, I'm going to push that E to the stack. So in typical uh, operations, I'm going to pop here and I'm going to push 
in most cases, when I'm doing the pushing to the stack, I'm going to be not only pushing my input character, but the character that I pop from the stack. In this case, I didn't pop anything. So I'm not going to push anything more than that single letter, right? So that's my single transition that I have. I could have a non-deterministic NFA, right? And I could um, say, okay, on a uh, state zero, let's say I have a empty stack and, uh, and Z, then I just skip to uh, the state three, right? And, uh, uh, and push Lambda and that would give me the solution, right? Empty alphabet, okay, so the null character, if you will, uh, could uh, fit in my alphabet, right? So we covered this in our FA, let's move forward. So here I'm operating from the, uh, the first state. And here I have an input alphabet uh, character A and uh and i pop from the stack let's say i have an a because i already pushed uh one to the stack then i'm going to transition uh in that loop and i'm going to in this case push a8 to the stack right uh and uh and i can keep on going like that right and and uh uh and that is really all the operations that uh that i'm going to uh have right um so that addresses all of the transitions from state one uh for the exception of b right so if i have one and i have a b and i popped an a then i would uh, go to state two and i would be um popping from the stack right And correspondingly, I would continually be doing that operation. I would uh, take a transition from state two in this case, I have a B and then um, and an A as input, then I would transition back to uh, the, uh, the same operation here. Finally, on the from the state two, if I have a lambda, I've just ran out of input alphabet. Okay, then I'd read in a lambda. In that case, I would uh, uh, check for z. Okay, and if I have z, then I would transition to state three with the lambda, and then I would be done. This essentially is telling me I have the empty state. So. So these two are from actually from this operation here and the pop operation is managed here. That's this loop. And then from here, I transition to the final state given that I have the, um, the final solution. So let's just try this really quick with one of our examples. I have a AABB and on the first A, first I start off my stack an empty stack so i'm going to push the a to the stack and that is going to uh, be the operation here right and if i had the null then i would be using this state and i just immediately jump to three i have a second a here and i'm going to push that i'd be exercising this rule i'd be pushing in any number of a's and i'm pushing two a's why because i pop this A and I push two back, right? Now I have a B, I popped this A. I have the B here that I'm considering. I'm gonna pop the A. And what I'm going to do is not push anything, right? I'm just back down to one A. Then I read in the second B 
In this case, and I pop the A, and what do I push back? Nothing. So I'm back at Z. And then I'm in that state. Lambda transition, my input takes me to lambda. Okay. And that takes me to the third state. And that's at Z. And I move to state three. And if I'm in the state three, it's the final state, right? And if I didn't have the equivalent, the equal, equal number of A's to B's, I would be stuck in state two. So that's really the simplest implementation of pushdown automaton. Hope this helps. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you.